What's up, what's up, what's happening? Three likes already for this video, that's, a, that's amazing. What's up guys? Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful evening again here in, uh, in the studio. Welcome to Watch Me Work. Um, so far there's some people in and usually for this show and in most cases, uh, People come in a bit later, so we can give them some time to to get themselves together and jump in. But yeah, in the meantime, I'd love to know where you where you guys are from. Uh, hey, what's up, Arbs? What's your name? Where are you from? And of course, Bricks. So Mabel, how are you doing? I know. Okay. So I think, so I'm using this, I'm using this, uh, device from, um, I'm using this device from, uh, Elgato called the stream deck. Yeah, I can see it there. So, so I use this to to make it easier for me to run this show. And whenever I press a button, uh, for some reason the mic mutes, right? So now I'm I'm sure it's not muted because I can see I can see the 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 audio meters um, pulsating, right? So. I'm I'm not sure why why that happens. Whenever I would post a comment, uh, it would it would go on mute. So if you can hear me now, just you know say hi. Right, hey, what's up, Kai? Uh, new to the show. First time I've seen you here, and of course, <laughs> EJ comes in without saying hi and just said muted. EJ. EJ, you are a spirit. You are my spirit animal. Um, yeah, and Arbs, Arby John, and I'm from Marivel's Bataan. Awesome, man. Nice to see you here. All right, so we got, uh, we got 12, 12, uh, guys here now. Uh, that's the, I think that's the most I've ever seen. Um, that's the most I've ever seen here at the start of the show. So maybe the show is picking up. Fingers crossed. And what's up, Randy? And yes, Kai. Oh, thank you. Thank you for thank you, Julia, for 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 spreading spreading the word and uh and inviting you in. So all right, so I'll get to I'll get into the meat of it. Uh welcome to the show. Watch me work. And this is basically where I demo uh, my editing process. Uh whether it's photo or video. For for now for season one, I think I'm gonna focus on video. Uh, sorry, photo. And we this is our sixth episode, right? And one season I pegged one season at twelve episodes, so we're halfway there. Randy, you know the song, cue it, cue that Bon Jovi song in the comments. And uh, if you if you don't know who I am, my name is Noel. I am there. You go. I'm a conservation and wildlife photographer, um, actually all around, but. You know that's that's what I'm known for. So if you haven't seen my work, you can head over to Instagram the Wild Guevara Photo, and I also host a show called Hammerhead Gearhead where I do gear reviews, right? So I review everything from 
travel gear, adventure gear, bags, backpacks, cameras, lenses, the whole gamut, lights actually. Uh, this this Friday, it, it uh, and each episode airs every other Friday, if I'm not mistaken, right? I'm I'm doing a review on these these lights, these awesome awesome lights, uh, the We Light K twenty ones that are giving me this this really cool like a uh, edge light right now. And uh, also, please, if you have Uh, actually, according to YouTube, I'm five, five subscribers short of 3,200 subscribers. So if you haven't yet, please, uh, please subscribe. Give me that final push to make it to 3,200 and I'll absolutely appreciate it. Also, uh, super chat is on. So this is a way for you to extend your support uh to me in a monetary way to to help support the show i'm am i muted again because it doesn't it's not muted here okay so um i'm gonna stop using this thing you know what whatever okay so uh what was i saying yeah so super chat is on and if you want to you know, show your support. Uh, I don't earn money on this show, so that'll be awesome as well. And then let's do a quick recap. Let's do a recap. All right. So, okay. So in the in the last uh, five episodes, uh, we. We did a, a show. Our first episode was all about uh, achieving white balance underwater. So it was, it was for this uh, Nemo fish, as as clownfish are known for. So I'm now looking at my audio meter every so often just to make sure that I'm not on mute. It's crazy. Uh, we also did an episode, the second episode, on how to the three best ways to turn your photos uh, into black and white. Uh, we went through a couple of options right there and almost going to do the same thing today to achieve film look. And we also did an episode, I think this this was, was the third episode on how to leverage uh, Golden Hour. So you shoot Golden Hour, everyone knows it's amazing to shoot at Golden Hour. And the thing is, how do you, you push that in post, right? So it was, a, it was a really cool episode showcasing my photos from Wonder Food from 2019. And then we also did Panorama, the best ways to stitch, to shoot and stitch Panorama. Uh, this is a, a photo from a Sungi GeoServe that they shot last year for a project with, uh, with Fujifilm. And then, yeah, so these are the, the photos that we did. And then the last, for the last episode, we did, we went back underwater and talked about how I edit my um black water photos right so from from dirty dirty water or black water in this case to just all cleaned out and today is another interesting episode because we're going to tackle how to get that film look in digital right but i'm sure you guys are here for one particular reason and that is for this nan light uh lito light it's can we get in focus? Uh, there you go. Lito Light 5C. So the thing about Nanlite is that they have these numbers at the end. So 5C, that's how many watts or how strong the, the light is, and it's pretty strong. And if you have a Nanlite ecosystem already in place, it's an amazing addition because you can control everything through your app. So this is made possible, of course, by our sponsor, MQ Lighting and Nanlite Philippines, and we're also sponsored by Saramonic, uh, the mic that I'm using right now, and who is also going to do a giveaway on our 12th episode, right? Okay, so I'll, I'll do a giveaway of this in a bit. I'll, I'll raffle it off during the episode. But before we begin, and hello, what's up, Dodo? As is the case when we have these episodes is, as you can see right here, this is the Nanlite uh, Pavo Bulb again. So... Can someone give me a color? 
we've already had red, blue, pink, purple, uh, green, I think. So I can set the color for this one. And someone pick a color and let's have it on for the whole show. Let's do it. Let's put some music on. EJ. So EJ is a... Uh, is the CEO of Nikon Philippines. Um, he was the one who made me the Nikon ambassador before. So, okay, well, Kai came on first. So, Teal. All right, let's do Teal. There you go. All right. <laughs> Black. <laughs> All right, there you go, teal. So yes, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna stay with teal for the whole day for the whole episode, and that's what's awesome about this. You can control it with your phone, and you can change the colors. And for tonight, for tonight, we're sticking with teal. And this bulb is also made by Nanlite, so I have quite a wild uh, Nanlite ecosystem right now. All right, so let's get started and let's get into the film show. Or the film episode okay so let's go to my all right all right okay so what's awesome about uh film uh is that it's film right i'm sure albert here has been shooting film uh as well right so it's it's been a it's been a craze lately to to try and get that film look with digital cameras and bridging that gap needs a lot of work and there are many ways to do this so you have plugins you have presets and um you also have standalone software right so i per in particular loved shooting film for example this uh, i shot this little girl with this cute dog cute but very very vicious dog that wouldn't let me get near um the little girl to take the photo so this was shot with Ektar. I, saw, I shot this with the Voigtlander. Yes, we are old men, actually. It's true. Old, <laughs> old, man, old men shooting film. So yeah. Um, I shot this with Ektar, Ektar film. Then I shot this one. This is my niece. Uh, she was a flower girl on her wedding. So this is our, this is our wedding in, in 2017. And I shot this with Superia. Uh, my favorite, favorite film of all time will always be the Kodak Porta 400, mainly because of the skin tones. And it's just amazing. I love sh shooting portraits aside from wildlife and conservation and the Porta 400 just, you know, hits it out of the park every single time. Uh, I also love the, the um, Tri-X. And when I'm, when I'm out on assignment and I'm usually shooting color, I bring a Tri-X with me uh, with my Voigtlander or my FM2, my Nikon FM2. My favorite camera is Nikon FM2. Favorite film camera is the Nikon FM2 because it was made the year I was born, which is 1982. <laughs> so that's 40 years ago. Um, yeah, and uh, that's absolutely amazing. And yes, correct. Correct, Mr. EJ Bagtas. Film is back. And it's been a trend. It's, a, it's been an aesthetic that's been persistent, especially with, um, with wedding photography, right? So I would have friends who shoot both film and digital at the same time. And what they want to do is to try and bridge that gap, digital and film, to make it look like it was all shot in film. So that's what we're going to tackle uh, today. So before we proceed, guys, please like this video if you haven't yet. Um, I'm seeing 12 uh, in the audience and we only have six. So I'm going to hold this episode hostage until that gets to 12 before we proceed. No, I'm kidding. But just, yeah, um, hit the like button. And at the same time, I also uh, do the same. I also simulate use uh, simulated film. Uh, for example, I love shooting... Because I shoot uh, digital, but when I shoot my personal photos, I use digital as well, but try to use film simulation to bring it back uh, to what I used to love before. And EJ, okay, tell me which films do you have? Um, if you have Portra, if you have Tri-X, I'm going to get it off your hands. So normally I shoot my kid 
obviously a lot and I use a mix of Superia and um, Portra as well when I'm trying to achieve that film look mainly because it's what what's, it's what I love to use so it's not just I'm you know I'm gonna put this preset because I like it it's because I have a film stock that I already have in mind all right so let's get started um, everything starts in Lightroom but everything ends all roads lead to Photoshop so all right, so let's get started with one of the more, how would I say, uh, basic or easiest approach approaches to this. So let's answer the question, why do people want, why do photographers want to go back to film? Uh, for, for some reason, there's, a, there's an upswell, and like EJ is saying, that there's a resurgence in film, mainly because the images seem richer. And then at the same time, I liken it to going for vinyl, right? So you have digital cameras, but you still go, f but you still go for film in the same way that you go for Spotify or digital music, but you still collect vinyl. There is that um, unmatched aesthetic. You would say, like there is perfection in the imperfection of film. And what I love about film is that it can never also be the exact same thing. And that nostalgic feel of it also has that sort of callback. And primarily for me, it's also getting it right in camera. And this is the, the heart of the show is while we're focused on editing in post, uh, I always say that get it right in camera first and shooting film trains you to do that uh, in a very technical and slightly mechanical way at first, but eventually becoming very creative. Okay, so... Let's get started with this. Uh, let's put some music on. There you go. Okay. So what I would normally do before I get started is to try and fix the distortions first. So if there are any sort of lens corrections that we need to do, um, I will try to get that in. So I was shooting with a Nikon. And uh, where's Nikon? There you go with a 50 mm 1.4 and at the same time I try to get the horizon right at the start you know just to get that down pat I know we are trying to go for imperfections but at the same time you want the photo to come out technically correct I would say and one thing I love doing and this is odd I love editing and you know, with a white background why i try to and whenever i try to use film simulations uh, i see it as fine art and i already see it as being framed so if you're using lightroom you can just right click and go for a white um, backdrop i know this may complicate getting colors and tones correct but it's just a thing something that i, lo I love doing uh, i got this from one of the film photographers who edit also in post and i forgot his name uh, but it has caught on with me. So again, the first thing I would do is always, always try to get the details from the highlights first and the shadows. Bring that out and over. Try to crush the blacks a bit and just increase the overall exposure first and try to see what we have. This is just preliminary uh, global adjustments because once you apply the preset, it completely changes everything that you have to go back and do it again. Uh, I'd probably bring up the vibrance as well and try to see where I, I want to go. Okay, maybe that's somewhere I want to go. So let's check what type of um, film simulation we would want. So here, I'll turn off my video first. All right, so here on the left, as you can see, we have different presets from Mastin Labs. Uh, they have Adventure, they have these collections, right? So they have Adventure Every Day, Fuji Color Original, Fuji Color Pushed, Ilford Original, Lifestyle Every Day, and so on. Lifestyle Every Day and Adventure Every, Every Day actually are more of the Kodak and Fuji, uh, Kodak films. Uh, I don't think they have access to the, to the license to call it Kodak, so maybe that's why they do it. Um, so for example, here you have Fuji Color, Superian, Acros, right? So when it comes to adventure, for example, you could go for something like adventure every day. So you can go for going with Ektar, 
gold or try X, right? So automatically you can get a preview of what is happening. And I would probably go with just Ektar. I love that sort of oversaturated imbalanced look and fix it from there. You also have the option to either go hard highlights, hard shadows. Uh, in my case, I like uh, going hard highlights and then the shadows are a bit soft. All right. And then lens corrections, we turn them on. And finally, I'd love to add a bit of grain to it. So 35 millimeter grain or medium format grain. But again, once you, once you, once you have applied the preset, it's not a, it's not an easy bake oven. Oven, you just put it in and that's it. You also have to try to adjust the settings to conform to how you see it in your in your head, right? So going back here, it's basically just tweaking all of these. Like I feel like the contrast is okay, but uh, it's too high for me. Like try to see it framed. So that's what the white border is for. Right, I try to see it as a framed, um, a framed photo. So I bring up the whites a bit, and also I would reduce the saturation slightly, just to make it there. I always go to HSL when it comes to film and just try to see the hue, and try to adjust it especially the aqua part because I wanted a slightly not too aqua. There. Okay. And then the last thing I do is of course is to just adjust that horizon line one more time. There. All right. So that's how easy it is to apply a preset. So with Mastin Labs, you have so many options. You can, if this was mine, I could, for example, even go, here's another photo. I could probably go the route of Portra. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Portra. So I could, I could head over and go to Portra Original. Portra, Portra 400 is my go-to. Right. So I would put that in. And then just correct that horizon horizon line. Oops, sorry. That hor horizon line is killing me. There we go. Okay. And then I will again adjust the basic curves, lessening the contrast slightly. E bring up the, the exposure. So characteristic of film is that there's there are imperfections so you could go a bit overexposed it has its own look and i'll probably increase the vibrance slightly here and some clarity because we're too far away so port that would be portra another way to do it would be to bring it to photoshop right so now i'm going into uh sort of the second method. So we have Mastin Labs. Mastin Labs is free. Oh, no, sorry. It's not free. Of course not. What am I talking about? Uh, Mastin Labs is paid. So if you go to Mastin Labs, and then you will see right now all the presets that they offer. So for example, it's quite expensive. So sometimes it's at $50 or sometimes $90. Uh, you can have Lightroom desktop presets. You can have photo uh mobile presets, they, uh, they come out at $99. But if you wait, if you wait for a sale, sometimes they go down to 50 or $49. So these are the best ones that I've seen so far that really mimic the simulations, uh, from, from actual film stock. What I didn't cover, however, would be also film simulations within your camera. So. For example, if we go to, if you shoot with Fuji and you check out the raw, the raw files right here. Um, sometimes when you use Fuji, you can change, right? You can change the simulation modes in post if you shoot in raw. So another that I love doing would be doing it in Photoshop, right? 
So doing it in Photoshop, for example, uh, let's bring out one. Let's show that screen to you. I will go back to Lightroom and then pick uh, probably this photo and edit it in Photoshop. So I've talked about this multiple times and that is the use of, um, that is the use of Nick collection. So normally what I will do first is bring out my Nick collection plugin. So out oh, here. And then normally I will first adjust the color and tone with Viveza. And I'll probably select something that matches the look that I want to get started with. So let's zoom out slightly. Okay, I like this. I like having some fill light in it. And then just hit apply. Okay, that's where we're going to start. And then now we can go into Analog FX Pro, which is that they simulate classic cameras and effects. You, the, the thing about plugins, though, is that you have to be very careful about going overboard. You don't want your, your photo to look too processed. Um, in the, that's exactly why I like Analog FX Pro, for example, over Alien Skin. It's just, they're just more control. Um, you can also select your cameras on the left, right? So you can go crazy uh, with these things. And you have to make sure that you are careful about the settings that you use, right? Okay, so you can either go black and white, you can go blue faded, for example. Uh, and what I normally do is select something that's close to what I'm looking for. So like something like this. And then I remove the dirt and scratches that they put on. I remove the lens of vignette that they have. And for the film type, you can select what kind of film type you, you want. So this type of approach is not film specific. It doesn't bring you uh, Portra 400 or something like that. It's, it's, it's not that kind of uh, approach. So if you want something exact, like I want Porter look, then I would just head on and do it in, in Lightroom with Mastin Labs presets. Um, but here, uh, th this is exactly more random. It's more to taste, so, so to speak. And what you want to do is sort of up, up achieve a certain recipe that you would use for all your photos. Okay. And then let's say you click apply. And there you go. So you can either, you can also, because you're doing this in Photoshop, you can adjust op opacity to lessen the impact of what you just did. Uh, yes, actually, that is a, that is a very good uh, question, uh, comment, Mabel. Yes, it does have that Lomo-ish effect and some people do want to achieve that Lomo effect um, from camera or from in, from in post. So if, it's outside the boundaries of Mastin Labs. I would head over and bring it here into um, Nick Collection through Viveza and Analog FX Pro. Right. Okay. The sort of third approach I would say would be to do this uh, through an, a software. Right. Okay. So let's save this as a TIFF. Excuse me. Okay, so we have that. Uh, we can check out the rest of the, yeah, there you go. So this is the first one we did uh, via Mastin Labs. This is the second one with it we did. So this is Superia. This is Portra. This is what we did using um, Analog um, FX Pro. And then this one, we can actually edit this and probably edit it in another application. I wonder if you could do this. Oh, sorry. You can, you have to go through. OK, 
okay here oh sorry my, my the, the photo wasn't on it was on me the whole time so let's do that again um yeah so this is what we did with superia we did this with uh portra 400 both mastine labs uh, we did this with Analog FX Pro. And this last one, we will do with raw processor, uh, raw photo processor. So raw, raw, sorry, raw photo processor is a free photo processing software for raw files, right? So NEF, it's taken with the Nikon, just select raw photo processor and brings that in. Oops, sorry, raw file. Here we go. Okay, so you can see how different this is from all the others, all right? And it's more, how we say this, more technical, I would say. Uh, it's not as intuitive as, our, as what we do. And you have the photo on the left and you have everything here on the right, all the way that you can um, edit it. So I discovered this lately because one of the people, one of the photographers, uh, who do NFTs had this and his work was absolutely amazing. So what's going to, what's going to come out here is you're going to post process it through the presets and the color. So let's make it up. Okay. So normally I go with K64, which is co uh, Kodachrome 64. It already adds that kind of um, film look to it already. And then you can increase the exposure. Hold on. Oops. Yeah, so it has a sort of very, a bit slow response time, but the effect of it is amazing. So let's make it, let's increase the exposure by one. And then reduce our black point slightly. Okay. All right, so if you guys have any questions as we as this is processing, um, just put them in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to hear your questions right now. And um, I think someone's messaging me about this show. Okay. All right. So, yeah, uh, if you have questions, just put them in, and I would love to see uh, see them and, and try to answer them. Or if you have any other processes that you like doing, please let me know. All right, so let's finish this off with uh, all right. Okay, so what happens after this is you can save it. There you go. You can save it as a TIFF for example, and then you can click save. There you go. So now it's a TIFF file. And what I normally do is import this in Lightroom again and just bring it back. So import. And I'm just going to hide my folder structure just a bit for you guys who, who like to spy on folder structures. <laughs> right. So, so far we have done Mastine Labs. Uh, we have, which is quite expensive, but very, very precise when it comes to uh, the types of filters that you can use. Uh, you can, we also used um, Nick Collection 5, which is a plugin, but it's not precise but it's not that expensive either. So sometimes it goes for $50 for the whole set. And if you've been uh, with us for the past five ep episodes, you know that I've been using it a lot. Uh, I use it for all my photos, especially for finishing. Okay. And then after that, we used uh, raw photo processor. Okay, so here I found the files, to episodes, episode six. 
and then raw files, and then we go to the TIF. Okay. Okay. All right, so this is what we achieved. We dropped photo processor, and I'll just finish it here with some more adjustments. So raw pho photo processor is like your stepping point, right? It's, it's a preparation software that you, that takes the, takes the raw, gives it a film curve and a film look, and then lets you edit it after. And personally for me, absolutely love this, the effect that it has. It gives you that, those curves that you cannot normally get with the other types of software. So I can please, and then I'll probably adjust the HSL. So what I did is basically global adjustments, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, brought up the shadows, um, brought up the white slightly, crushed the blacks, added some clarity to it very, very slightly, and then vibrance and saturation, and finally tone curve. I will just give it a very, very soft, mild S-curve, like so. And probably just increase the vibrance or the saturation just a bit more. And then bring down the contrast. There. Love it. Okay. So look how beautiful it is with uh, that white um, backdrop that we have. All right. So let's look at our four files that we, that we edited. So let's just mark them. Okay. All right. Uh, let's make it five. There you go. Okay. So this is the last one that we did. Um, all right. There you go. This is the last one that we let's zoom out slightly. There it is. Okay, so this is the last one we did with raw photo processor, then finished it with um, uh, with Lightroom. Then we also did this one. This one we did with uh, Photoshop, and then we did all the effects and the adjustments in uh, Nick Collection, specifically Analog Effects Pro after Viveza. And then here we did this completely with Mustine Labs with Porter 400. And finally, the very first one that we did uh, also with Mustine Labs, but with a superior, um, superior simulation. So there it is. That is our, um, those are the four methods that I normally use. Sorry, three, three methods that I normally use um, for getting that film look. If I really like the photo, I would use raw photo processor, mainly because I just like how it it prepares the image, the digital image, and changes sort of the film cur the curves to, to be that of film. But if I'm in a rush, I'll just do Mustine for everything because anyway, I invested in it also. So I might as well go that route. So if you have any questions, please, please um, let me know here in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Um, okay, from Mark, let's, let's bring Mark up. Okay, from Mark, film effect is quite a challenge in itself. You can't go too vibrant or too faded or vintage. Being film photos, you would you add the fo photo paper textures to complete film photo effect? Absolutely no. <laughs> Mainly because I feel like it's um, it's going overboard by adding that film uh, effect. Maybe maybe if I was starting to print it or I was very there was an intent, an actual intent that I wanted to look a certain way. Um, then I would do it. But for my photos, I don't do it because, I mean, if you print it, it's not going to look nice as well because that isn't the, f the, the, f the photo paper stock that you're printing it on, right? Anyway, does it make sense? But honestly, I feel like it's too much uh, if you even add that. Okay. 
actually i want to ask everyone here who shoots film what is your favorite favorite film stock what do you want what do you love using if mine was porter 400 tri x and um i would say ektar what would yours be albert i know you're here and i would love to hear what you use huh Okay, from Mabel, who still accepts film processing around Manila net right now? Uh, we have Film Folk, and then, uh, and then you have Sunny Studios. So both, basically, the, the, how, the way it works is you send them your, your, your roles, either via mail or you can have them dropped off. And then uh, they will develop it, and they could even scan it for you and send it to you as a, through Dropbox or for download. So um, it's an amazing process, easy process. It's not, exp it's not cheap though, uh, but it's a bit expensive. I'm uh, sorry, it's, it's not cheap, but it's convenient. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. I was distracted by all the comments here. Um, okay, so yes, uh, Studio 58 also uh, does processing. Yes, Albert, try X, try X is the king. Kodachrome as well. So we did that simulation. Uh, Kai, I would love to know how many you use for 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 your photography. Um, Porta 400 per in. Yes, absolutely. And Photo Fabric, that's correct. So Photo Fabric is another one uh, who does the, the processing and scanning. So actually, I'm... I'm I think... Uh, There you go, Sunny Sixteen, not Sunny Studio. Sunny Six, Sunny Studio is the is a is the the shades, right, or the eyeglasses. So yes, Su Sunny Sixteen Lab, uh, Ice is part of that. Uh, Ice is part of that. So yeah, that's awesome. Okay, um, there was a question here. Okay, so. Another thing is that uh, you got to be careful when traveling with film as well. Uh, I'm, I'm heading abroad in, in a month and I'm trying to shoot film a lot uh, with my FM2. And uh, one of the tips I got was just to bring everything in a... Uh, remove the, all the packaging, remove the canister and just put everything in a Ziploc and just have them hand inspect the, the film rolls. Uh, the undeveloped films, All right? So, so yeah. All right. So let's get. Uh, okay. So one last thing is that when you're trying to do sim film sim simulation, uh, you have to know you have to draw the line at trying to achieve an exact uh, sort of mimicry of the actual film stock because. You know, you have to accept that it, it won't get there. You know, it won't be perfect. It won't be perfectly how it would have been captured with Portra. So you also have to have that discipline to not over develop, so to speak, your film to make uh, your photo to make it look like it was shot in film. Does that make sense? So you have to have a sort of, you can't be heavy handed when you do this. Um, Bricks, you, you impress me. Kodak Gold 200, absolutely. Uh, for for golden hour, I haven't I've I've never I've never tried that. Okay, so let's get into the raffle, should we? I'm seeing fifteen uh, people logged in. Again, please, I'll give you the time to like uh, and subscribe. Um, are you going to bring me to 3,200? Three, 3, uh, 3, Let's check it. So the thing about YouTube is you have an app and you can check how many people actually subscribe to you. 3,197. Right there. Can you see it? Let's see. Nope. Nope. That was That was a big epic fail but yeah i'm at 3197 so if you haven't yet please subscribe to my channel uh and hit that notification bell right down below and please like this video 
because I'm going to start raffling off and I'm going to make sure that you have liked and subscribed and everything before you proceed, before if you've been won it. Actually, no, that's not part of the, the mechanic, so I won't do that. Okay, so let's get into it. All right, because... All right, so because this show doesn't have budget <laughs> and it, I'm doing it all from my own pocket, I use a free, a, a free website service to do my comment picking. So as you can see here, I'll be completely transparent about it, commentpicker.com, logged in my Facebook, linked it, and then I select the Facebook post, which is this, um, the raffle alert, and then minimum, minimum amount of friends tagged in one comment has to be three, right? And then I will be generous and include comment replies, and you know what? I won't filter duplicates because it's fine. All right, so are you ready to go? Okay, let's start and pick a winner. What's happening? It's not picking again. Click first. Okay, get comments, sorry. Okay, getting comments. 26 comments and let's do it. Glenn Paolo Salvador Porcala, are you here? I think this is Pau. I will count to 20. I'll count down from 20 because there, of course, is a lag. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. None? All right, let's pick another winner. So if you're not here, unfortunately, you won't get it. You have to be present before you can get it. And going once. Oh, Pau's here. Awesome. And there you have it. We have our winner for today. <laughs> for those who uh, for those who didn't get in, so Pao, thank you very much for for participating. So you will get this uh, Nanlite Tito Light Five C. Don't worry though, because uh, I still have some more giveaways in the next few episodes uh, from Nanlite as well, and prob and also from Saramonic, another mic. So, and some more lights. So don't worry, I, ha I have six more episodes and I might have three to four more giveaways from, from here until, until uh, the 12th. Also for next week, actually, I will, be, um, I will be showcasing how to edit photos from your iPhone and also using an iPad. So let me show you. Uh, these are photos actually that I shot with a, with an iPad, uh, sorry, with an iPhone 13. Uh, I recently had a partnership with Apple and Power Mac Center where I took photos using the iPhone 13 Pro Max in Masungi G Reserve. So I will show you how I edited these photos. It's a different approach to edit uh, photos from an iPhone because it's a completely different gamut I would say or range uh, compared to what we're used to with digital cameras it's small obviously a smaller sensor and I'm going to show you how to edit these travel photos uh, and adventure photos using both your desktop and your uh, iPad so there you go all right so uh, yeah that will be for next week and you know what since this was a partnership with Parmac Center. We might do a giveaway of a, a, an Apple product or one of the gadgets or brands that they carry. So let's see what happens for next week. I'll catch you then. If you have, please again, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I know I went 
Ah, I went um, muted again. So thank you very much for participating. And Pao, congratulations. I will see you in the next episode. Cheers, guys. If you haven't also, please subscribe again and check out my other shows. And follow me on Instagram, Noel Guevara Photo. See you all next week.